It is another nebula-projecting laser astronaut, but this time it's different because it's completely dead, and it comes with a cover note. Hello Clive, here is an alternative astronaut nebula projector. It was purchased from Timu uh, for Christmas, but was dead on arrival. Timu said there is no need to return it and have refunded. Presumably they want the e-waste to be our problem, indeed. I've opened it to look for anything obvious I could fix, but everything looks in order, at least nothing is burnt, soldered wrong, except that I can see. Pretty sure I put it back together correctly. The only thing I can guess at is the motor, which is a two-pin connector shoved into half a four-pin header, but I don't think that should cause catastrophic failure of the entire astronaut, unless it's polarity reversed. I'm not 100% which way it was originally. Also interesting the position of the infrared receiver, which is inside the backpack. I'm not confident this could ever work. How does the infrared get to it? It has the same 3 plus 2 wires connecting the head as yours, so maybe the infrared presses the buttons. That will be interesting. Right. So, it came with this lead. So the first thing to actually do here is get a little power analyzer and just see if it's drawing any current at all. If it's like a short circuit or something. So I shall plug it into this little Rudang analyzer. It's drawing nothing. Anything? Buttons? Nothing. Okay. Let's rule out the obvious first. Meter. Is the polarity correct in this? Is it even working? This is set to 20 volts. That's perfect. So is the lead okay? And is the polarity correct? Rub in here. Nothing. That's an interesting start. Hold on, I'm going to get the other lead from the other astronaut. Just give me a second here. Where is it? There it is. That would be a very, very easy fix, but it never, ever works out that easy, does it? I shall plug this lead in here. Hopefully the tip and ring are the correct polarity. Let's plug it in. And push buttons. Uh, the nebula projector is now working. It's the cable that's faulty. Right. So now we've done that, let's explore it further. Is everything working here? Oh, there's the laser. Mm-hmm. Not a very bright laser, I have to say. God, I can't even see the laser unless it's... Oh, it's doing its fading thing. Right, okay. Enough. Let's open it up and see what the circuitry is like inside. How it compares to the other one I took apart. Right, I shall tie a knot in this one, just to remind me this is the duff one. I can just stick it in the bin right now. I may just chop the plug off at the end, if it's that end, and just use it as for the lead. So he says the infrared receiver's in here. That's kind of interesting. Let's pop this open. I'm going to need a thin screwdriver for this. That is not the suitable screwdriver. This is where I just... Scatter all my screwdrivers everywhere. I didn't plan this, did I? Um, I'm not seeing my screwdrivers. One moment, please. I found a suitable-ish screwdriver. Let's see this infrared sensor in here. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit. I still have a box with a good chunk of fan-fold computer listing paper in it from the era that I was doing quite a lot of software writing. In uh, QL Super Basic and uh, DOS, uh, what was the one with DOS? It was uh, Microsoft Quick Basic, I think it was. What do we have? What do we have? What do we have? What do we have? Do we have the infrared sensor in here? It may just see through the plastic. So unscrew that one. Unscrew that. There is the infrared sensor. There is a power supply. That's interesting. This is different from the other one. So it's got three buttons. Uh, I'm guessing it's power. Plus one of the, the the buttons are all common to one reference. So this may be a standardised uh, voltage regulated supply. Excellent. That's intriguing. What are we going to find in the head? Is it going to be the same mechanism as before? With the... Uh, distortion disc just basically um, spinning inside a little sort of cradle, which was quite an interesting construction. Are these screws coming out? I think they're coming out. They might not be coming out. 
They do feel very loose, but they might not have just been snugged in too tight, which is good. Not like those ones you get from China, where they've just basically just run it right into the point of, this is completely different. What the heck? This is very different. There's the LED source projecting down onto something that is then firing out at an angle. This is very interesting. Can we get this out a little bit further? Is this glued in there? Is the circuit board? We shall analyse the circuit board. There's the laser, as is often the case. There is a little four-pin connector with just two jammed on. I wonder why there's two drives. Are there two transistors for driving that? It looks like there are two uh, options for transistors here. I'm not actually even seeing a transistor in one of those positions. I'm seeing the three for the LEDs. Right, tell you what, let's unplug everything. So that one was in the one to the side. That's actually a five pin connector this is wedged on. That's exciting. Uh, this is a little connector for the, well, this is the laser coming on here. These are well jammed in. If these being glued in, it feels like it. But they may just be a tight fit. Here is the one for the LEDs. And here is the one for the other bit. Let's whap this out and see what's, what's going on here. This is very odd. A first time for seeing this. Now, the other one, the infrared receiver, was actually mounted below this pattern of holes. I wonder how efficient this one is compared to the other one. I may try them next to each other and just see how bright it is. At this point, I don't even know how it's working. Is it a reflector that it's actually rotating a sort of chromed plastic disc? And is the laser glued in properly, or is it going to fall out like the other one did? This... Ain't coming out too easy. Are these uh, screws required to come out too? Let's just take all the screws out. That's usually a good result. Now it's coming out. What a weird little mechanism. That is worth exploring. How strange. Yeah, we'll have to open that up. Uh, and I shall also... Let's see, is the laser? It's just wedged in. Again, with the diffraction disc in front of it, the diffraction material just sort of jammed in there. Right, OK. Well, we know what we'll do now. I shall uh, take a picture of the circuit board and we shall reverse engineer it and uh, then take it from there. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. So the unit is divided into two sections. This, it turns out, is a power supply section. That's why it's got the inductor. It's got the infrared, which sends data up, and it's got three switches, which uses a voltage divider to provide a voltage level up to the top. Let me zoom down this uh, a bit more. So the incoming supply comes in the jack here, and there is a capacitor across that for general decoupling. It would have been nice to put a diode in that, particularly given this is actually regulating down 3.6 volts, but they didn't. This is the inductor that couples with this A6163Z. Now, it's worth mentioning that that A6163Z is actually a MT2492. That's a good correlation of numbers there. And this uh, is basically, it's a little buck regulator that uses the inductor to drop the voltage down by providing pulses and it effectively just kicks back against it. It acts like a, a resistor to limit the current, but also but using inductive techniques, it just makes it more efficient. And then there's a, a voltage divider here that provides the signal back to the feedback pin. And by changing the value of these resistors, you can set the output voltage. In this case, they've used 3.6 volts. And the reason they've done that is to reduce the dissipation of the resistors for things like lasers and the LEDs, notably the LEDs. The infrared sensor is just tapped directly across that 3.6 volt supply and this pin goes straight up. Um, and the potential divider is formed by this resistor down here and then these resistors that are switched in by the uh, switches. Let me show you the schematics for this section first. I've abbreviated it somewhat. Incoming USB supply, 
smoothing capacitor, MT2492 uh, regulator, and it produces the 3.6 volts that then goes up to the module. There's an infrared is tapped across that supply rail, and then it goes up to the module, and then the other module, and then this is the 100k resistor going to the positive rail, and then each of these resistors is switched to the negative rail when you push the button, and it just means the voltage in the switch connection that goes up to the other control module again, uh, just when it sees, if it sees 3.6 volts, it knows no buttons are pressed. If it sees, say for instance, you press this middle button, it would be half that, it would be 1.8 volts that would go to. And by looking at the voltage, it knows which button has been pressed. It means that they could use one line for as many switches as they wanted. And then there's two other connections in that uh, connector, and it's two zero volt connections. Okay, next circuit board. Here is the next circuit board. The supply comes on here. There is loads of decoupling little capacitors dotted about left, right and centre all over the circuit board. There is a 4.7 ohm resistor and a capacitor pr to provide a filtered supply for the microcontroller. Uh, the motors, the reason there are so many connections is because it can drive four motors. There's a common positive connection and then you've got one, two, three, four, each with its own transistor and... Um, back EMF diode. So there's a one, uh, the one motor that is used with its 330 ohm resistor because it's a standard NPN transistor. There's the second motor, there's the third motor, and there's the fourth motor. It's just basically four channels. I wonder why they've done that. Then for the laser, we've got a 7.5 ohm resistor in series from the power supply, and we've got a A2SHB MOSFET switching that, directly controlled from the microcontroller. And then for the LEDs, we've got another three A2SHB MOSFETs and a resistor in series of each colour. So 4.7 ohm for the red, 1 ohm for the green, and 0.33 ohm for the blue. Interesting, there's two positions for resistors here. I wonder why they've done that. Maybe it was for the red, was originally designated to put there because the red has a higher voltage to drop and more will be dissipated across the resistors. Anything else worth seeing? No, that's it. It's one of those things that took a lot less time to tell you than it took to reverse engineer. Although, to be honest, it wasn't that hard to reverse engineer. Here is the controller. I'll zoom down this a little bit. So there's the uh, supply coming on, 3.6 volts. There's the zero volts. There's the little decoupled supply, 4.7 ohm leading down to capacitor just to try and filter noise from the microcontroller of the switching of things like motors. We've got uh, the NPN transistor, the J3Y, switching the motor there. Times four if you want, because there are four positions. The laser has its re uh, resistor going to the positive rail. Then the laser diode, I've just drawn one little beam of light there because it is a laser. And then going down to the MOSFET, which has a 4K7 pull-down resistor, but is driven directly from the microcontroller. For the LEDs, this circuit is repeated three times. We've got the LED, a resistor, 4.7 ohm, 1 ohm and 0.33 ohm for red, green and blue. And then it's down to a MOSFET again with the 4K7 pull-down resistor. And that is it. Now let's take a look at the interesting optical module this module here and it's not as good as the other system it produces a different effect but if we take a look at it i'll zoom out a little bit here so you can see it in more detail i'll zoom out a bit more because it's very big yes we have a this is the case open here so we've got the collimating lens for the led circuit board the led circuit board just basically has one of those standard one watt three watt type beads on it and that uh, goes into the end of this uh, collimating lens, which is a total internal reflection lens. And that focuses the beam down onto this rotating disc. The disc is rippled glass with mirror mirroring in the back, and it's just straight onto the geared motor, so that rotates slowly. The beam comes down, goes through the ripple, bounces off the mirror, comes back through the ripple again. And I'll show you that effect, and then gets diverted uh, through this uh, front lens and then fired out the front of the unit. I don't think there's any other lensing. That is it. This is just a, a clear cover in the front of this. However, it's not very bright, but see if you actually point the laser down through here into this. That's a very different matter. So I'm going to set that up and I'm going to show you the effects and what they look right right now. So one moment, please. The unit is now running. I shall turn the light off and show you what this looks like. And this is it. I have to say it's not as bright as the other unit. It's a nice module, but it really doesn't quite put as much light through as the other one, because the other one is basically just the LED, and then it's rippled glass, and then a lens to 
focus that and it's just straight out the front of the unit. This one is trying to fire it through two layers of the ripple glass effectively, which produces an interesting effect, but isn't as good. Now, let me show you it. If I do a little hack and I put the laser through this optical assembly instead. So I'll let you judge. Is this a better effect? I'm not sure how well it's coming across in camera. It's quite a detailed, complex effect. But because the mirror, the laser is being shot into that mirror and then back out again, it creates a fairly complex morphing, rippling effect that covers quite a large area. It's not too bad an effect. But anyway, watch your eyes. The light is coming back. So in summary, um, quite a disappointing fault that, you know, the cable had basically resulted in the whole product being condemned as such because it's faulty. Uh, but quite interesting to take apart, very different to the other one, although it looks identical in the terms of the case. The whole functionality is different. The circuit boards are different. It's strange that it's using the regulated power supply uh, to lower the dissipation. That's maybe a better move. This actually seems a more complex optical assembly than the other one, particularly because it requires the mirrored, uh, presumably glass, rotating disc, the ripple disc, but it just doesn't pack out as much light as the other one does because perhaps it is just trying to get too much into a small area. But an interesting thing, a very interesting thing, and certainly smacking the laser into the uh, into the optical assembly provided good and interesting results. But there we have it. Uh, it was an easy fix. It just needed a new cable. But uh, to be honest, it's not as good as the other one. It's uh, just a bit disappointing in terms of performance. But other than that, interesting circuitry and an interesting optical assembly.